Greetings everyone, I am Ben Cryptomancer Greenberg, Malware Analysis Team Lead for the Pentagon Computer Incident Response Team and Adjunct Professor at George Mason University. Welcome to the first and what I hope will be both a prolific and profoundly useful series of YouTube videos. Today I'm going to go over installation and configuration of Kali Linux as a virtual machine. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to Kali.org and then click on downloads at the top. Most people will download either the 32 or the 64-bit standard version of Kali. If you're a student of mine, you're going to need to use the 32-bit version for general use. However, I prefer the 64-bit version. You can download this either through HTTP or via BitTorrent. Either way, at the end of it, you will end up with an ISO file, which you can use to create a virtual machine with. Now, since I already have this file, I'm going to skip ahead to VM creation. For virtualization software, I'm running VMware Workstation Pro version 14 dot whatever. If you're a GMU student, you can get this for free, which is pretty cool. If you're not, and you don't have this, and you want it, but you can't get it legitimately, well, then I can neither condone nor condemn using alternative means of acquiring this software. Otherwise, you can use Windows Hyper-V or VirtualBox, both of which are free. I, however, prefer VMware Workstation, and thus I'm going to demo with that. So go to File, and then New Virtual Machine. Leave this as Custom. Leave this as the default. And then choose your ISO file here. Mine is located here. There we go. Now, VMware will tell you that it cannot identify the operating system. This is fine. All this means is that it can't use easy install to automatically install the OS, which means we have to do it manually, which is what we're doing anyway. So cool. Click Next here. You can select Linux and then Ubuntu here. It's the closest thing, but this really doesn't matter at all. You can name your VM whatever you want. I'll name it Kali, just because that makes sense. Now, the nice thing about Linux is that it doesn't take a whole lot of system resources, so I usually just give this one processor and two cores and four gigs of RAM, and I've never had to slow down with that. Uh, you can keep networking as NAT. If you're working with certain malware or doing exploit development, you may want to switch this to host only for those experiments, but for now, at least keep it as NAT so that you can download updated packages once installation is complete. Now, VMware has a hard-on for SCSI drives for whatever reason, like this is a 1990s era server or something, but whatever, it's fine, it works, so just stick with it. So you can stick with the default here, stick with the default here, create a new virtual disk. 20 gigs is typically fine. If you're running 64-bit Kali, I've run into space issues a couple times, especially during big apt-get full upgrades, but uh, 20 gigs is fine. And you can bump it to 25 if you're worried about that. I always leave this a single file. You can name the disk whatever you want, this doesn't matter. Now, VMware has a penchant for creating what I call extraneous hardware, and so I typically will remove the USB controller, the sound card, and the printer, because you almost never need this functionality in a VM. So then hit close, and then finish. Now we'll hit the play button to start the VM. It will beep very loudly at you here. You can scroll down to graphical install or just press G. We get some disk errors here. This isn't important. You can ignore this. It'll work anyway. OK, so now we're in the initial setup phase. Choose your language, which for me is English. Location is US. Keyboard is American English. And now it's going to load some more crap. This will just take a minute. You have to sit through this completely useless loading of networking configuration, but whatever, just go with it. Can't do much else anyway. All right, there we go. Now you can enter your host name. I just leave this as Kali. Domain is blank. I don't have one. Here you put in your root password. One of the things I love about Kali is that it lets you log in directly as a root. You don't need to mess around with sudo like some peasant. No sudo. We die like real men. So put in your root password there, then you configure your time zone, Eastern. Now it's going to go through disk configuration. All right, so most people can just leave this as guided use entire disk. 
If you give your VM more RAM, like 8 gigs or so, you're probably going to want to configure this manually because modern operating systems, including Kali, will, for whatever stupid reason, automatically assign swap partition, or in the case of Windows, page file, equal to the amount of RAM that you have, which is profoundly counterintuitive because the more RAM you have, the less swap you need, but whatever. So if you have 8 gigs or so, you're going to want to reduce the swap partition just to not waste so much space. I'm going to leave this as guided to use entire disk. What's going to end up happening is I'm going to have a roughly 4 gig swap partition and a 16 gig root partition. I'm going to leave this as all files in one partition. And as you can see, 4 gig swap and 17 gig root. So then you click uh, finish partitioning, right changes to disk, and then continue, and then right changes to disk, and then continue again. And now it's going to do the actual installation. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to fast forward until installation is complete. Did you notice the live eat my data thing during install? I have no idea what that's about, but for what it's worth, I hope my data was super tasty. So now installation is done and you're presented with this option. Now this option is actually far more important than it may otherwise appear. It's asking you if you want to use a network mirror. Now you would think, given that this option is being presented to you during installation, that the scope of this option is limited to installation. You would be wrong. If you select no here, what's going to happen is it's going to remove all network sources from your app.sources list, essentially meaning you cannot update your packages online until you manually add your sources back in. So keep this as the default as yes, very important. Okay, I have a proxy, so I leave this blank. You thought we were done here, didn't you? Not yet. I love this blank screen here. No waiting cursor, no progress bar, nothing. Fantastic. This will just take a minute. So for the final stage of installation, it's going to set up the Grub bootloader. It's going to ask you in a minute here whether you want to install it or not. There we go. So it's asking if you want to install it. Say yes. And then here you have to choose your hard drive, which is dev SDA. Continue again. And now the installation is going to finish. Once this is done, it's going to prompt you to reboot. And when you reboot, you will be at the login prompt. So I'm going to fast forward to there. OK, we're at the login prompt here. The only user is root. The password is what you set during installation. Now, I can pretty much leave it to you here, but I'm going to demo a couple things that I think pretty much everyone is going to want to do, starting with changing the desktop resolution because this is for peasants. So to do that, you click on this Show Applications button here, and then the second thing, and then Settings, and then Devices, and then Displays, and then here you can change the resolution. So I'm going to set mine to that. Yay. The second thing I'm going to do here is Kali by default will blank the screen and suspend your machine if you're idle with it, which is really pointless in a VM, so I turn this off. So you set this to never here, and you click that, and now that's gone. Now that's gone, I said. Thank you. Okay, there are a bunch of shortcuts here. I remove everything that I don't use very often or that I launch through the terminal by just right clicking on it and doing remove from properties or remove from favorites. And then if you want to add something, you again go back to the show applications button here. And the one thing I'm going to add is text editor by right clicking on it and saying add to favorites. And this is just gedit, which I happen to prefer to leave pad. And then you can press escape a couple times to get out. So now I'll go to the terminal here, and if you're like me when it comes to Linux, you pretty much live in here. The first thing you're going to want to do is update all your packages. So the first thing to do that is to do an apt update. This will sync your local Kali repository with the most up-to-date online versions. Now before I continue, one thing to note about Kali as compared to other Debian-derived distributions is it, it does not have distributions per se. Instead it has what Kali calls rolling releases. As you can see it says Kali-rolling right here. So what that means is when you download an ISO online, what you're essentially getting is a snapshot of the most up-to-date packages at the time that the snapshot is created. You're going to see here when I do an apt full upgrade that I have 1.8 gigs 
of packages to download. That's because the most recent snapshot that at the time that I'm creating this video is 2018.2, which is quite a few months old. And so a lot of updated a lot of updated packages have accrued since then. In a month or two, they release a 2018.3, which will shortcut this process considerably. For now, though, I'm just going to say yes here and start this long updating process. I will fast forward to when this is complete. Okay, my reboot is complete. You'll notice that it messes up your desktop resolution during upgrade. Fear not, it will reset automatically upon reboot. Okay, so the next thing to do then is to delete some obsolete packages to reclaim some of your used disk space. To do that, you do apt auto remove and then click Y here. And this will just take a minute and this is basically just removing the packages that you just replaced during the upgrade process. Once this is done, you'll need to reboot your VM as you've almost certainly downloaded a new Linux kernel and you need to reboot to load that. The final thing that I'm going to go over is installing VMware tools to provide copy paste and drag and drop functionality, but we have to reboot first for that to work. So I'm going to reboot here and then fast forward for when this is done. Okay, I'm back from reboot here, and as you can see, my desktop resolution is back to the way I want it. So to install VMware tools, we're going to go to VM and then install VMware tools. And what this is going to do is mount a virtual CD here. So we'll open that, and then open this gzip tarball in here, and then take this folder and extract it to your home directory, which is just slash root. And then we'll get out of here and then go back to our terminal and you can see that there is now a folder called VMware Tools Distrib so go into there and then if you look in there there is a file called VMware install.pl so run that with dash D and that will uh, choose all default options for installation this doesn't take very long at all There we go. So now you have VMware tools installed. You'll have to reboot again in order for this to take effect. Now, if, if even after reboot, your copy paste and drag drop functionality doesn't work, the first troubleshooting step I suggest is to do service VMware dash tools restart, and that typically solves the problem. And that's it for me. Hopefully this was helpful. Good luck. I don't know, colleying or whatever.